Welcome to BTEC Revision. Today's lesson is on the laws of indices. By the end, we should be able to simplify algebraic expressions and apply the laws of indices. Let's start by looking at 2 times 2. This can be written as 2 to the power of 2. If you look at 2 times 2 times 2, this can be written as 2 to the power of 3. So it depends on the number of 2s. In this case, we have 3, and therefore we're going to have a power of 3. The number 2 here is called the base because it has a power next to it, and the 3 is the power, and another word for that is the index. We can also use letters to represent numbers. Let's take the letter a. We can say that is equal to 2, and if we square a, that's going to be therefore equal to a times a. Or we can say that's equal to 2 times 2. If we take a cubed, that's equal to a times a times a, which is equal to 2 times 2 times 2. So we can use letters to represent numbers. The first law. For the first question, we can see we have 2 to the power of 6. So that's written as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So there's six twos here. Then we need to multiply with 2 to the power of 4. So there's going to be four twos here. So if we add up all the twos, we're going to have 10. So we can write this as 2 to the power of 10. So this brings us on to the law of multiplication. So we can write that as a to the power of m multiplied by a to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m plus n. So when we have two powers with the same bases, we can add the powers to simplify. So pause the video here and complete the rest of the questions. All right, looking at question two, we have two to the power of four plus two, which is equal to two to the power of six. Question three, that's three to the power of five plus seven, which is three to the power of 12. Question 4, that's a, which is a number, so we can apply this rule to the power of 4 plus 9, which is equal to a to the power of 13. And question 5, a to the power of 5 plus 10, which is equal to a to the power of 15. So now let's look at the next law. We have here. 2 to the power of 6, which we can write as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And now we have a divide. So we need to divide and 2 to the power of 4. So there's going to be 4 twos like so. Now you can see the numerators are going to cancel with the denominators. So the twos here cancel and cancel here and here and there. And we are left with 2 times 2, which is equal to 2 to the power of 2. So this brings us on to the law of division, which is, is written as a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m take away n. Now pause the video and complete the rest of the questions. Looking at question 2, we have 2 to the power of 5, and that would be take away 2, which is equal to 2 to the power of 3. Question 3, we have 3 to the power of 5, take away 7. So that's going to give us 3 to the power of negative 2. Now for question 4, it's a little bit trickier. We have two laws, so the law of multiplication and division. So we need to, first of all, add 8 and then take away 5. So that's going to give us a to the power of 6. Now we can move on to the third law. For question 1, we have 2 to the power of 2 multiplied by 2 to the power of 2 multiplied by 2 to the power of 2. Simplifying this further, we have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So you can see there's six twos, so you can write this as 2 to the power of 6. 
So this brings us on to the law of powers, which is written as a to the power of m to the power of n is simplified to be equal to a to the power of m times n. Pause the video here and complete the rest of the questions. Question 2, this is equal to 4 to the power of 3 times 4, which is 4 to the power of 12. Question 3, that's 7 to the power of 3 times 2, which is 7 to the power of 6. Question 4, that's a to the power of 2 times 5, which is a to the power of 10. Question 5, that's 7 to the power of 2, power of 1, so it's just 7 to the power of 2. Now let's look at the next law. For 2 to the power of 3, that's going to be equal to 8. Next it's 2 to the power of 2, which is 4, and 2 to the power of 1 is 2, and any number to the power of 0 is always equal to 1. This is actually the fifth law. Now, looking at a negative power here, this is going to be the reciprocal. So we would write this as 1 divided by 2 to the power of 1. So when we have a power of negative, then we would write 1 divided by that number, but as a positive. Let's look at another example here. So 2 to the power of negative 2 is going to be 1 divided by 2 to the power of 2 which is equal to 1 over 4. And for the last one, that's 1 divided by 2 to the power of 3, which is equal to 1 over 8. So the law is written as a to the power of negative n is equal to 1 divided by a to the power of n. Using this law, now pause the video and complete these questions. Question 1, we have 1 divided by 6 to the power of 1, which is just 1 over 6. For question 2, we have 1 divided by 1 to the power of 2, which is equal to 1. And for question 3, there is no negative power to the 9, so we leave that alone. Then we divide by a to the power of 4. So let's move on to the fifth law. This is called the law of roots. Law of roots is written as a to the power of m divided by n is equal to the nth root of a to the power of m. Let's apply this law to the first question. So this is equal to 2 root 2 cubed, which is equal to 2 root 8. Now, we can simplify this a bit further. We can separate the 8 into a 4 and 2. So that's going to be root 4 times 2, which is equal to splitting it even further. So that's root 4 and root 2. So we know what root 4 is equal to. Square root 4 is equal to 2. And we multiply with root 2. So this is the most simplified version of root 8. Now pause the video here and complete the rest of the questions. Now let's finish these questions. So that's equal to root 9, which is equal to 3. Question 3 is cube root 27. So we need to think of a number multiplied by itself, multiplied by itself, which is equal to 27. So that number has to be 3, because 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. For question 4, we have 4 root 100 squared. So there's two ways to do this. We could square first, or we could square after. So if we square first, it makes things a little bit easier in this case. So that would be the fourth root of 10,000. So we need to think of a number multiplied by itself, multiplied by itself, multiplied by itself again to be equal to 10,000. So that number has to be 10 because 10 times 10, which is 100, times 10 is 1,000, times 10 again is 10,000. 
And the last question, we have question five. We can write third root of a to the power of four. The sixth law is the law of power zero. So looking at these numbers here, we can see if we have a power zero, that's always going to give us one. So this could be true for any number. So if we take five to the power of zero, this is equal to one. If we take a hundred to the power of zero, that's equal to one. So I take any number to the power of zero, it's always equal to one. So summarizing, we have the law of multiplication, the law of division, the law of powers, reciprocals, the law of roots, and the law of zero index. Two things to note here are if we have a number, let's call it a to the power of one, that's equal to a. Similar to what we learn in algebra, if we have 1a, we don't need to write the number 1 in front of it, that's just equal to a. And the second thing is, if we have the number 1, and we can power it to any power, so for example, squared like so, 1 to the power 2, that's always equal to 1. 1 to the power of any number, even if it's the biggest number, is always equal to 1. Pause the video here and you're ready to answer these questions. Let's have a look at these questions. Question 1, that is 4 to the power of negative 2 times 3, which is equal to 4 to the negative 6. And we can simplify that a bit further, say 1 over 4 to the power of 6. Question 2, that is 2 to the power of 5 plus 3 which is 2 to the power of 8. Question 3, that is cube root of 27. So that has to be 3. And for question 4, that is square root of 100. So that has to be 10. Question 5, we have to collect like terms to simplify this. We can start off with the numbers 6, and then place the letters alphabetically. So we have a, p to the power of 8, and that's done for the numerator because the rest is in the denominator. So we will divide re a b cubed. So you can see the a's cancel already. And we're left with 9, so we place that at the front, and then alphabetically that's a, b, then we have p to the power of 4 plus 7. Okay, now let's see where we can cancel out. So we can cancel the 6 and the 3 to get a 2. And that's added, so the b's can add together. And I think we can simplify that a little, little bit more. So that's 2 p to the power of 8 divided by 9. So we have a a, the b's add to give b to the power of 4, and multiplied by p to the power of 11. So we can cancel out the p's for the last step. So that's 2 divided by 9ab to the power of 4, and that's going to cancel and give p to the power of 3. Question 6. We don't have a rule here, so what we need to do is we need to manipulate the numbers to apply the, one of the rules. So in this case, we have an 8 and a 2, so they need to be the same number, same base. So what we could do is we could convert the 8 into a 2 by operating 2 to the power of 3, and that's going to be power of 3 because 2 to the power of 3, that's 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, so 8 is equal to 2 to the power of 3. And now we can divide with 2 to the power of 4, and simplify that using the power rule, so that is 3 times 3, so that's 9, divided by 2 to the power of 4, so we can use the division rule, so that's 2 to the power of 5. Now for question 7, we have two numbers that can multiply, 5 times 5, so that's 25, and the a's are going to give us a to the power of 2 plus 7, 
which is 9. For the last question, we can multiply each power with each number. So that's going to be 4 to the power of 3 multiplied by j to the power of 8 times 3. So simplifying that, 4 cubed, so that's 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 is 64, multiplied by j, so 8 times 3, so 8, 16, 24. And that's the end of the lesson. If you would like to boost your grades, why don't you join us at btechrevision.com, sign up for the online learning platform, where there are more resources available. See you next lesson.